This is section 10.3, and this is on combinations. So we've already talked about permutations. That's where there's no repetition and the order is important. So we talk about the arrangements of things. So back in 10.2, we did an example where we had a class of 45 students and we chose a president, vice president, and treasurer. That was a permutation because order was important because of the titles. Now let's suppose we take the titles out of it and instead we just want a general three-person committee. Now the order isn't important. We still have no repetition. We're not going to have the same one person on a three-person committee, right? That'd be silly. But the order isn't important because it's just, you know, a general committee. So in a three-person committee, the order not being important means that this type of arrangement is called a combination. So in general, permutations, the order matters. Combinations, the order does not matter. So let's just start with determining which is the case. Is it a permutation or is it a combination? So let's look at some examples. So remember, permutations, order is important. Combinations, order is not important. I had um, a student once tell me that she remembers the difference between these because if you are getting a perm, the order in which things happen is important. So I don't know if that helps or not, but I thought it was pretty cool. And I was like, hey, that's a, that's a good way of remembering it. So pause the video and see if you can label these as either a permutation or a combination. Okay. If you're going to choose six volunteers for a medical research, is the order in which you choose these important? Well, no, because it's like a committee, right? So the order isn't really important. So this is a combination. What about an eight character password that uses letters, numbers, or special characters? Is order important for this one? Yeah, absolutely. If you pick your password to be the word password and you somebody types in word pass, it's going to fail, right? So the order is very much important. So that's a permutation. What about the three digit combination on a combination lock? Is that a permutation or a combination? It almost feels like a trap, right? Because you're like, well, obviously it's going to be a combination. The word's written twice. But think about it. If the combination to your locker is um, 20, 10, 5, and you do 5, 10, 20, it's not going to open. So the order is important. So technically it should be called a permutation lock because the arrangements are you know, a permutation, but it's not. But that's always a really good example just to show you that even though that word is in there, it's used in a different sense from permutation combinations kind of thing. The top three finishers of a race. Is this a permutation or a combination? Does the order matter? Yeah, the order matters, right? First one's first place. So yeah, order matters. That's a permutation. Okay, what about E and F? So pause the video and label those as either permutation or combination. Remember permutation, order matters. Combinations, order does not matter. So three families selected from a raffle who went a free vacation to Hawaii. Is the order important? No, because it doesn't matter if you're selected first, second, or third, you still win a free vacation. So order is not important. So that is a combination. 
What about a two card hand that you're dealt in the game of blackjack? Is the order important? No. It doesn't matter if you get in your two card hand, if you have a king and an ace, or if you have an ace and a king, that's the same hand. So order is not important. So once again, that's a combination. Now the number of combinations, we have this formula for permutation. So we're gonna um, define the formula now for combinations. If you take n total objects, and you group them R at a time, R just represents a number, without replacement, is given by this formula. Now this looks a lot like the permutation formula. And it is, in fact. It's the permutation formula, and then it also uses that, um, remember in the last section where we had uh, repeated letters? We divided by the number of repetitions. So it's similar to that because the order is not important. So it doesn't matter how those R things are ordered. So we kind of take out that, that um, arrangement. Now this is built into your calculator. So you know where the NPR is. So NCR is right there with it. So it's under math. Go over to probability and you'll see the first one is random and meaning it's a, a random number generator. Um, we'll see in statistics <clears throat> that there's times that you might want to use a random number generator. We have NPR, NCR, and factorial. Those are going to be the three that we're going to use in this chapter. All right, so let's do an example. How many seven card hands can be dealt from a standard 52 card deck? We're going to be using cards a lot in probability. Right? Um, a standard 52 card deck, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Um, just in case you don't know, a standard deck of cards has four suits. So that's the name for hearts, clubs, spades, <coughs> excuse me, and diamonds. I hope that's not too loud. Those are what's called suits. And each suit has an ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, and king. There's 13 cards in each suit. Now, um, the clubs and spades are black. The hearts and diamonds are red. just changed colors there not because it was red but because I want, didn't want it to get all cluttered up there. So a lot of times with cards we'll ask questions like you know what's the probability of getting a red card and by red card I mean that it's either a heart or diamond. Half of the deck is red half of the deck is black okay. and then these four suits are equally distributed among the deck. Because notice that 13 per suit, 13 times, or sorry, 13 plus 13 plus 13 plus 13 would give you the 52. We don't count jokers. Um, the jack, queen, and king are what's known as face cards because they have faces on them. A lot of people mistakenly think an ace is a face card. It's not. There's no face on it. There's no eyes, mouth, nose. Hair. There's no face on that, so it's not a face card. A face card is just the jack, queen, or king. All right, so now that we got that stuff out of the way, um, we'll use that stuff a little bit later. We don't really need that here. I just figured I'd go ahead and throw that at you. How many seven-card hands can be dealt from a standard 52-card deck? We have no repetition, and the order doesn't matter. Right? Because it's just a seven card hand. It doesn't matter 
which order those seven cards are in. It's still, you know, the same hand. Um, so no repetition in order doesn't matter. So it's a combination. So we're going to use NCR. N is the total. R is our little um, subset. So we have 52 total cards and we're looking at the arrangement of them seven at a time. All right, so let's just use the calculator here for 52 C7. So first we have to type in 52. Then we have to go to math, probability, Make sure you do NCR, not NPR. Now don't hit enter, you still gotta type in the seven. So you have to hit the N, you have to type in the number for N first, then bring up the NCR command, then type in your number for R. All right, that's a big honking number. So 133,784,560. That's a lot. Let's look at example three. On an exam, you must pick two essay questions from six essay questions. How many different ways are there to choose the two questions? Order is not important here. So it doesn't matter which order you choose them in. So this is a combination, because this is an arrangement where you can't pick the same essay twice. And to write about it twice, you gotta pick two different ones. So you can't have repetition and order is not important. So it's going to be NCR. My total number of questions is six, and I'm choosing two. All right, so let's use the calculator. Remember, we have to type in six first. Get it where you can see it, okay? Six. Math, probability, in CR, and then two. We get 15. So that's what it looks like on my screen. I had to type in the six. Then I had to go into the menu to find the NCR command. Then I had to type in the two. If you forget to type in this two, you will get an error message. It'll tell you there's a syntax error. If you get that message, a syntax error means it doesn't understand what you typed in. So if you go to go to, see, it's going to blink on the problem. See, it's blinky blinky there. It's saying, hey, I need something here. You forgot this. So sometimes when you get an error message, you can um, troubleshoot it on your own by doing that go to thing. All right. Now, let's suppose that on exam, you must pick two essay questions from six essay questions. And you get to pick 15 multiple choice from 20 multiple choice. In how many ways can you pick the 17 questions to answer? All right, this just got a lot more complicated because now we're going to have to use something for this and. Now, this is usually an indicator that you're going to want to use the um, fundamental counting principle. You might remember that from 10.1. So this and tells me that, okay, I've got two different scenarios happening here. And these are happening in succession. 
So that's where the fundamental um, counting principle comes in. So we know that the essay choices were 15. We just found that out up here. The multiple choice, we're going to do 20 C15 because there's 20 of them and we're picking 15 of them. So I just use the calculator. That's my number of choices for the multiple choice. This and, meaning I've got this happening in succession, this is usually your indicator to multiply. So using that fundamental counting principle, I'm going to multiply the 15 ways of doing of choosing the essay questions times the 15,504 ways of choosing the multiple choice questions. That gives me this total here. This is where things start getting kind of dicey because we're going to start intermingling the combinations and the permutations and the fundamental counting principle. All these things are going to get jumbled up. So I'm going to do my best to help you identify places where you can look for keywords and just try to do a whole bunch of examples where we can have a bunch of different scenarios so you get a good feel of when to use you know what formula. All right, last example here. The college is forming a seven-person committee to hire a new president. The committee will be made up of two faculty, chosen from 80 faculty, three staff members, chosen from 200 staff, and two administrators, chosen, chosen from 10 administrators. In how many ways can this seven-person committee be formed? Pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. This one is very similar to the one we just did with the essay questions and the multiple choice questions. We just have now three different things happening in succession. We've got the faculty, the staff, and the administrators. So it's just an extension of the previous example that we did. So pause the video and see if you can figure this one out. Okay. These are happening in succession. So we've got the two faculty and three staff and two administrators. This is usually an indicator. I don't want to say it always is. Sometimes it's just, you know, the word and. But typically if you have stuff happening in succession, and the stuff that's happening in succession here are arrangements. We're having to pick two from 80 and then pick three from 200 and then pick two from 10. So do you see where all these numbers are coming from? So this is the way to choose two faculty from 80. This is the way to pick three staff members from the 200 staff. And this is the way to pick two administrators from the 10 administrators. I'm just going to use the calculator to get those three numbers. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply those together. And we get a really big number. Now on the calculator, let me just show you what that's going to look like. So we get 3160 times 1 million... 313,400 times 45. So that's what that number looks like on your calculator. So you can see it's got this weird little E over here. That's scientific notation on this calculator. That's the abbreviation for times 10 to the. So this is the same thing as 1.867. Ooh, you know what? Look at this. I made a mistake in here. Do you guys see what I did? I made a little mistake right there. I rounded wrong. Or I didn't round. That's my problem. Look, it was 8, 6, 7. There's a 6 after that 7. So that should have rounded that up to an 8. So let me fix that real quick. Let's get this out of the way. So that should be an 8 right there. And then times 10 to the 11th. Means that should be an 8 right there. Now this is actually an approximation over here. Both of these are approximations, but this one I just wrote it out for you. 
um, so you can see what it looks like. Times 10 to the 11th means that decimal points move to the right 11 places. That's a really big number. What, what is that? So that's um, thousands, millions, billions, 186 billion, 800 million ish. There's obviously more digits in there. I just didn't bother writing them all in there. So this is the one that you're going to want to put as your answer. So that's the one you're going to want to use. And like I said, this in your calculator is written like that. And that's just the abbreviation um, this calculator uses for that times 10 to the business. All right, pretty short and sweet section. So that does conclude um, section 10-3 for us.